All right, my man, I want y'all fellas to state your name and let them know you on Real Talk with Nick. Starting with you, brother. My name is James Dawson. I'm playing with um, Reverend Express back in 125 North Street. I went to school in Morristown, Tennessee. I graduated from Manhattan, Kitchen, Kitchen High School. It was 1970. Okay. I think I was the old, old time to run. Okay, and yourself, brother, let them know who you are. My name is David Britton. I'm from 116th Street between Lennox and 7. I played at Kennedy High School. I played at Potomac State Junior College in West Virginia. I played at Texas A&M University in College Station, Texas, and I played with the Washington Bullets. In the NBA. I was drafted by the Dallas Mavericks when I played with the Washington Bullets. Okay, man. And, and, and real talk with Nick. This is the Nick channel where we talk about Nick content. And I want to ask your brothers, man, something, man. When we speak of the NBA, or basketball in particular, how important is defense? And the, when we speak of the, today's game. Defense today is, you know, some people just want to play defense and some don't want to play defense. See, when they get their money, then they decide to slack off. You got to keep it going. We got fans that pay tickets to hit and stand and watch your game. Right. So you know what you got to do? Keep it going. Don't let up. Because the kids, you got to kids that they have to pay for the kids. They have to pay for the kids. Right. And when I speak of a player like Julius Wren, well, Some say Julius Wren was playing out of position. He's a power forward, playing like a point guard. Well, that's the coach fault when they drafted him. That's the bottom line. That's the coach fault. Coach fault. Yeah. Nobody else fault but the coach. None but the coach. None but the coach. So you feel the coach should hold Julius Wren accountable? Exactly. If you come to my game, you don't play my my, my pass. That's it. Nothing different. That's okay. My pass. Nobody else. Okay. All right. And the same question to you, sir. Um, first of all, uh, defense wins championships, right? The only thing that will be defense is uh, great offense. If you notice in most championship round in the playoffs, it's very hard to get a shot, even to get a set. But defense has to be taught, right, the proper way. Um, speaking of the Knicks, uh, they have a defensive coach and a defensive mind concept and everything like that. So if you don't know how to play defense, you have to guard. Whatever position you play, you got to be able to guard. So you have to be able to play defense or else they're going to find the weak link. The ball going to find the weak link all the time. Okay. Now, isn't the object is to score though? Scoring is the hardest part of the game. Scoring is the hardest part of the game. If you look, there's 450 basketball players and maybe 25 people average 20. Out of 450 people, that's the hardest part of the game, right? But these kids are so skilled now, they shoot. But you look at shooting percentages from from way back when until now, almost the same, almost the same. But it's very hard to score a basket. So if you see a scorer, that's why they always look at the scores in the NBA. Okay, now I'm going to ask you, brother, what you think is missing in today's game? My, my, what's missing, like, when they got out of high school, a lot of people have played, but it's still gun and run. Back in my day, gun and run. Especially at a small team. But see, some people don't go by the patterns until they get to college. And then they, they get lost in that because they didn't know it when they was in high school. Okay. okay. So now you got to pick up on that. And then you got the pressure on you. Because now your game gets thrown off a little until you learn the playbook. Because you learn it in high school. So that got to be adjusted on that part too. Right. If you don't, you'll get lost in the game. You get your big ass contract if you sit on the bench. Okay. Now, now my next question would be to you, fellas, starting with you, brother, is when you compare Rucker to the NBA, right? Some say the Rucker is just as important than the NBA. So, when you say just as important, what do you mean? I mean, like, some would undermine the Rucker, right? And say, oh, it's not the NBA. So, you got NBA players that will come to the Rucker. Like, for instance, Joe Hammond scored 50 points on Dr. J. Yeah. So, a lot of people was amazed by that. Like, wow, here's a street baller. And they would be amazed because they figured Joe Hammond wasn't in the NBA. Well, they don't understand the reason behind all that. Joe Hammond could have been in the NBA. That's not, Joe Hammond had NBA talent. That was a whole other concept. That's a whole other story. And the, the, the Rucker is not the NBA. It's not no comparison. You have NBA players that come and play, but you don't have whole teams coming to play. So it's not no comparison. If you take the every average day, well, the best player in the Rucker, or the first, the, the greatest street ball player they could, they call was Skip Tamalu. He's the only person to make it out of to the NBA. 
I played street ball, I played college ball, and I played pro ball. Pro ball is the hardest thing that you can play on. Hold on a second. Then you have, then you have the understanding of, you, now you're playing with the greatest athletes in the world. So the speed is different, angles are different, and everybody has almost the same ability to do the things that y'all think are fantastic in the streets. To do this continuously and for 82 games and 48 minutes a game. Okay. All right. All right. See, the street game always gonna be the pros out. You know why? Because they got the ball out game. See, they don't have to worry about, about, about plays for the games and all that because they know how to do it. And once they get there, they be lost and they have to adjust to that. See, you got to remember one thing. You got pro, you got street ball players to beat the pros out. You see, they don't know that. Because you know why? Because they stay every day ball line. So now the ball lot is different from the pro game. They play the base under the name of the playbook. But well, you say ball lot. The ball is like this. Ball lot, ball lot. Rock and, rock and roll. They got that ball lot. I mean, rock and roll. See, you got to remember one thing. The street game got the street game in there. Pros got the game, but they play by the book. They didn't play by the book. They play the street game. So that means they're going to beat them out until they learn the game from the pros. Sometimes the pros will beat them out. Okay. Because you know what? The bottom line is like this. Learn to play, and you never had the coach to teach you to play. You learn from the streets. So the streets are always going to beat the pros out a lot of the time. Okay. Now I want to talk Nick basketball, man. I mean, you looking like you disagree. No, 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 because I, I disagree. Like I'm trying to tell you, if you're not, like the street game was easy for me. Like I can go anywhere, I can get on the court at any time. If I can score 20, 30 points, that wasn't a problem. If I get to the pros, scoring two points is hard, right? You take a street, I learned, I was a, I started at center, then forward, then guard, then point, right? In, in the NBA, the only thing I can play is the point, maybe the two, and I was considered a big guard back then. Right, but the, the problem is the athletic ability is way above the street game. The street game got, is more entertaining than the pro. You have to be able to understand, like a playbook is discipline. You have to have, that's why they call it professional. You have to have the discipline to learn that. You have to have the discipline. You learn that in college. Like everybody can't make it to college. Put it this way, there's 1.6 million AAU ball players, right? There's 450 colleges. If everybody got 12 scholarships a year, what, that's 1,300 or something like that? Right? Nobody, if they got two, that's it. So now you only got 450 basketball players in the league. You understand? Right. And only 60 of them get drafted. 35 of them, 25 of them coming from overseas. That's only 35 Americans. So if you're not the top college kid, you're not getting to the league unless you're going to spend a bunch of time traveling around the the world to finally make a, a, a as a free agent it's so so competitive right okay. all right but the bottom line is like this a lot of kids from the ghetto don't learn their education they never finish school all their school is in the streets the bottom line is this that comes first education first that's most second that's how i learned okay you got to get that if you don't how you read a paper how you read your contract come on makes and sense these coaches right? out here, they don't care as long as they get they cheddar Right. Okay, come on. Right. Now, I want to talk about coaches in the NBA, right? You can probably collaborate on this. Kevin Williams, right? I interviewed his brother numerous times on my show, right? And he was saying how there's a lot of politics where we speak of the game of basketball, right? And the relationship between players and coaches. Where if a coach don't like you, they will hinder your game. Have you ever experienced that while playing for the Dallas Mavericks? Well, I wasn't playing with the Dallas Mavericks. I was with the Washington Bullets. I mean, Washington Bullets, was, I'm sorry. I, I was with Kevin one time. We were in Dallas. Seattle was playing uh, the Mavericks. And the night before, I watched them. They played San Antonio. Kevin scored about 23 points, right? Kevin was out here. Kevin was an offensive juggernaut, right? Um, even in college, he could score. But in the pros, they made him a defensive player, which he was a, considered a great defensive player. But the night before, he had like 23, seven and seven, right? The next day we get to the elevator, George called, walks into the elevator and says, Kevin, he scored like two points, maybe two rebounds, maybe assists. He told Kevin, great game. That's the way I want you to play every time. 
So how could you tell them, don't tell them great game about the 23-7-7, but you want to tell them get a great game 2-2-3. Two, two, and three. That don't make any sense. So there's a lot of politics in the game. They might not like you, and especially going back then, like they didn't like you. The players didn't have as much control, so they had to take what was given to them. But nowadays, with the power, the way LeBron and these guys that came in, the players can speak up and talk back, and they have way more power. So the coach has got to be a little bit, a lot more lenient because guys can come and go as they feel. Okay, all right. Now I'm gonna switch it up, man. You wanna, you wanna add on to that? No. Um, it's correct, but see like this. You gotta get a mentor behind you to keep pushing and forward the way you're supposed to be. See, as I said, a lot of great ball players in the ghetto don't have education. Okay? Okay? So now when they get to the pro, they lost. You see? Because they can read the contract, they can read the playbook, so they've been learned from the coaches that they let them do what they want to do in the street. Street ball players, it's got knowledge. Streetwise. So, where you go from there, and who gonna help you go to the next step? To read your contract and get your money. That's what I'm talking about. Nothing else about that. So basically, the rucker is Madison Square is pre Madison Square Garden. Y'all saying right? No, 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 no. no, no. The rucker is the rucker, and the pros is the pros. The pros right. right. The rucker, for one, if you learn the history of the rucker. The Rucker, Mr. Hoka Rucker, used to have, you have to have a certain grade point and you have to be able to pass your classes and they put you on team right. and you perform. If exactly. you didn't have that, then you, then you couldn't play. You can play. But also, then you have what they call an entertainment thing, which y'all see, and one and stuff like that. That was just pure entertainment, right? A lot of those guys, a lot of them play, I used to coach the Gaucho, a lot of those guys played for me. So when you see that, You'll be like, okay, he was good. He was able to do this. But he wasn't able to do it at a professional level. When it was time for them to come out, they're older than what? They're not 21 and 18 and 19 out there. So these guys are older, and that made them pass their prime, but they still have fantastic, instinctive skills, stuff that was very hard that a lot of people can't do. But you can't take that and put that in a professional way. You can't. You have to understand what a professional rank is like. You can't be out here dribbling the ball forever. You got 24 seconds. You got eight seconds to bring the ball. That's that ball. You got people six, seven guarding like you six one doing all that. Where you gonna go? You gotta be able to shoot. Okay. You gotta be able to pass. Okay. Now I want to switch it up, right? Good analogy on what you just said, brother. Knicks, right? When we speak of these Knicks, right? Everybody, we in New York, right? Everybody want the Knicks to get back to winning culture when we speak of basketball, right? Knicks hasn't won a championship since we had a coach called... 73. 73. Holzman, right? Red Holzman. What, what is going on, man? What you think is the deficiency when we speak of these Knicks, man? One of the deficiencies was called Michael Jordan. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I do. Okay, so that caused a lot of people deficiencies. And then you have to be able to put... You have to have stars in order to win. You can't have one star in partial. If you look at all the great teams, they had a collection of stars, right? You gotta be played above, above average. Magic Johnson once told me this. Everybody think that they're a star, but a star is somebody that can perform 48 minutes a night, every night. When the people pay their money to come see, they wanna see you do something magic or Jordan's. They don't wanna say that you're tired or anything like that. That's where the professionalism come out. You gotta be ready to perform every day for those people that's paying that money. Okay, 48 minutes. And oh. most people can't play 48 minutes no, they a can't. night. Because All right. for 48 minutes a night, because of the mental focus it takes and just the talent. And I will tell you something else. You know why people can't play 48 minutes? Because we always play in short courts. Courts. Right? You go to colleges, they play long courts. Since they now they get the wind span is different now. They gotta hustle even more. Okay. Now with the uh, Marshall, Tennessee, I was playing the court out here, but the court was double sized that court. Okay. So now my wind span gotta get up to another level now. Right. And then the air and the and, and Tennessee is different harder. If we don't get air through five o'clock in the morning, just seven, that's it. You shut off. Gotcha. Now we got short court. So what we gonna do now? I just go down to I go to school. I just went out a month before time. I didn't know the court was that long. I'm up in the public until I learn to run with that game on the court because the court was long. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just All right. See, some people can play that half court, but all that razzle dazzle, 
you take that half foot, you do it when you take the half foot, then do it back that. Don't take it all the way down so you got the wind left. All right. That's why Earl, uh, bro, watch this was bad. I See? got you. Now I'm gonna ask you, brother, man. You said you played against the Knicks. Who was the most challenging player you ever came across, man? Earl of Pearl, Mongo, uh, Sugar Ray Richardson, and Walt Frazier. And Walt Frazier. And in order, who, how would you rate them, them, them players that you... Uh, uh, Walt Frazier had the best all-around game. Earl was devastating on offense. And Sugar had, like, he was a miniature Magic Johnson. He was like just physically more talented than both of them, uh, faster than both of them. Um, but he had to, if, if he just went through it without going through all the obstacles that he went through personally, he probably would be listed as one of the all time greats. Sugar, right? Sugar, Sugar Ray Richardson. I think, Richardson. I think um, the Stalk, Stalkton that was here with uh, that team that time, I think they could have won the championship. Right. And they messed up. And they took, they put on the struggle that day. They put on the show. It's time for you. But, uh, what you call Dunk the ball. You should just lay it in. Oh, Pat Rout. I mean, no, Patrick Ewing. Yeah. And Patrick Ewing. Like, you should have dunked. You should have just laid in and they would have beat you. Speaking of Patrick Ewing, man, is it safe to say that Patrick Ewing is not getting this just due? I mean, he's not a Nick coach. Some say he should have been a Nick coach. If not him, Mark Jackson. Like, like. Mark Jackson. Well, you have to understand, earlier you made a uh, statement about politics. There's politics in the game. Mark Jackson uh, was uh, relieved of his duties at Golden State because of a remark that he made. And it wasn't re religious, but Mark is a priest, a, a pastor. So he can't go to what he was, what he's brought up on or his belief. So that's like, they forgive people for doing way worse stuff like that. You know, Rick Pitino and them that did all kind of stuff and got, you know, second and third chances. So it's not about Mark, he's not gonna be here. And then um, uh, Patrick Hill, Patrick, Patrick Hill and, how are you going to put him as a coach? Because you like him? What has he done to be a professional coach? Well, I would base it on his playmaking, and he was a player. Like, you, you don't see yourself as a potential coach. You play the game. You was in the I, I coached on the high AAU level, right? I could, probably could have coached college. I don't know where I potentially could have been. But it takes a lot to coach. It's not just you got to be able to speak to those guys. Now, he has stints as a pro coach and whatnot. And if they thought like that, if an owner liked them, they would have gave him a job. Uh, Jim Dolan, Dolan is a whole different type of animal than one another. And the Knicks don't, you got to have players. I don't care who the coach is. If you don't have no talent, you're not winning, no matter who the coach is. And I'm Nick, I'm Nick. I know we're going to lose, but I'm still a Nick fan. All right, but, got you. But what I'm saying is that, okay, what I'm saying is that you, to, to, that's a whole nother animal. What coach they pick in, and Mark Jackson. A lot of them, we knew, we New York fans, right? So we want we want our people to be there, right? But it doesn't happen like that all the time. It doesn't happen like that. But but what I'm saying is that you have to professionalism and amateurism is two different things. Totally two different things. I, I tell like people, they say he should have been a pro. Well, a pro. That's why they say professional. Read the difference between a professional and an amateur. Talent-wise, they might have the talent, but to ca carry and conduct themselves in the rightful manner and whatnot. And all the pros aren't great or perfect people. They make a lot of mistakes, okay. but their talent level is so hard, so that's why they bring them in. Okay. Now I'm going to get to the, the nitty-gritty of this whole interview, man. I want to mention some players on the Knicks, man. Starting with R.J. Barrett, man. When I mention a player like R.J. Barrett, man, what are you most impressed with, man? What do you think his ceiling is going to be as an NBA player? When you, th I'm not a, a R.J. Barrett is a nice dude. I know his father and whatnot. He's a very nice dude. He's just not my type of player. Why you like, say that? Because he, here you go. He has a few good games. He's improved. He done scored a lot for, as a rookie and then his second year. But that's on a losing team. You see, when they get to the playoffs, all that stop. You understand what I'm saying? All that scoring and what they're doing in the regular season stop. That means they could be 
what they, the teams could focus on them and say, okay, this is how we're going to start RJ Pratt. It's not like going from town to town, city to city every game where they're not really practicing. they practicing now to shut these guys down, right? So on a losing team right now, he looks like, oh, my God, he's tall. We need him and whatnot. We need a superstar like the kid out in Utah that we're trying Dominic to Dominic Mitchell. That's what we need. So would you trade? R.J. Barrett for Dominic Mitchell? Yeah, I would. I'm not worried about height. I'm, this is what counts to me. And if you can play. Like, you can score, you can score, and, and that's it. You don't bring nothing else to the game. What does that do? Wow. Ah. What does it do? Tell me. Wow. Ah. So, in your eyes, R.J. Barrett couldn't even... He wouldn't have no... What's the word I'm looking for, man? He, he couldn't even adapt... In your no, no, no. I, let me just show you something, right? And I used to be critical of R.J. Barrett. Then after I watched him in a second, I said, R.J. getting better. RJ, but when it's time for him to put a whole game, I don't know how long that's going to take. Right? You just, at the top of the conversation, you said the Knicks haven't won since 73. Right? right. We got to bring in some stars. You need stars in the garden. This New York. That are able to perform in New York and have an all-around game. Do you see an all-around game in R.J. Barrett? Does he pass? Yeah. No. Why you say he doesn't? Because he don't. Where has he ever passed that? If you watched him in high school? You watched him in college? No, I ain't following okay, the college. Okay, watch him. He's not a passer, he's a scorer. That's what he does. Is it safe to say that his mid-range improved? His shooting improved. That's, not a, that's nothing wrong with it. His shooting improved. But let me ask you a question. If you had to take... R.J. Parrott or, or Donovan Mitchell, who would you take right now? Looking at... One's an all-star, one's not. Who would you take? Who scores more? Donovan Mitchell Who scored. rebounds more? Donovan Mitchell. Who assists more? Donovan Mitchell. Okay. So who would you take again? A if you're looking See, at, don't do you how I feel like what I like. I don't be at the best players. Okay, but well, we talking about long haul, right? I, this is the problem right with the now. Knicks. Okay, I, I agree with you on that. All right, but this is the problem with the Knicks, and some will, will highly agree with me on this. Some say, okay, what has Donovan and Mitchell done in Utah? Some don't even. It's we in a debate whether he's even a superstar. Some say he's a borderline superstar, like. What has he done? Like some say, Jalen Bronson exposed Donovan and Mitchell. Some say Donovan and Mitchell is defense liability. Now we got a defensive coach. We speak of Tom Thibodeau. With somebody like Donovan and Mitchell, who you high on, right? And don't get me wrong. Yeah, you proved your point. You proved your point as far as stats. Do you think he'll be able to fit in Tom Thibodeau's system? Yeah, because they're gonna build. They're gonna let him do his thing. Whatever system you got, you got to have a star out there. Name one team that don't have a star. Name one team that the team is not built around. Who would you build your team around? Uh, uh, Donovan Mitchell or... Um, or um, R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett. Who would you build your team around? Donovan Mitchell, to be honest. Yeah. Like, it's not even a, like a question. I'm not... They say they want to keep on to him. That's cool. Like, people used to lose him, so they, okay, we good. Okay. We can cheer, and yay. Okay. And when the Donovan Mitchell going to come up here and put 40 on us, and we're going to be like, wow, we wish we had him. <laughs> I'm, 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 you make, you make him some, some good points. I'm uh, swimming in deep waters with Nick, so I'm going to ask you some questions, brother. And my questions to you would be, some say if you bring Donovan Mitchell here, right, the starting five would be strong, but your bench going to be weak. You got a coach like Danny Age, right? Who? I mean, Danny Age, you know. Danny Age. From from Utah, the front row. He's not the, he's not no, no, he's not the coach. I made a the mistake. General manager. General manager, excuse me, that's what I meant to say. F from Utah, he won so many picks just to acquire uh, Dominic Mitchell. So now your starting five will look good, but do you think he's worth giving up players like Obi, uh, uh, McBride? Yes. Yeah. I want to keep McBride though. I like McBride. I watched McBride play in West Virginia. McBride gonna be all right. So do you think it's an insult to have him in the G League? Oh. McBride. No, 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 no. I understand what they're doing. They, when you're in the G League, he's just playing, so he's not sitting all the time. He's performing. But if he's they nice. Guard, they guard. They guard. They're they going to go with Barry. He's their first pick. So they got to go with him. 
Okay. And then what's his face is picked ahead of McBride too um, from Houston. He, 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 they got to go with the first rounders first. That's just a rule. Okay. All right. Well, written rule. First All right. Rule. And how do you feel about Obi Toppin, man? The power forward, man. Some say that he should be the next man up because some is not pleased with a, a lot is not pleased when we speak of a player, Julius Randle, who some say is doubtful. They that gave Julius Randle the money, so they got to play him. So that they can either trade him off or something. They just can't put somebody ahead of him. So another way, they're in disarray. The Knicks are in disarray. Is that going to hinder OB's development as a player? It depends how he's working. I don't know. When he get his opportunity, he got to do what he got to do. And do you think Obi's just a player who runs fast breaks, man? Excuse me? Do you think he's just a fast break player? Some say, oh, all he can do is run fast breaks. He needs to... But we haven't really seen... You got to have time to get set in. The Knicks are a disarray team. Like, they, they got a thousand guards. You got anybody can shoot. It's just not... There's no continuity in their offense at all. So how do we know? You know, you gotta put you gotta put a solid, you know, Mitchell got hurt. Hey, you know, it's up and down. They just really a mess to me. Like they made the playoffs. Like I was like, wow, so they made the playoffs. Yeah, no one has seen that coming. Right, yeah. But then after, that was last year. Not this past year, two years ago now. Then you see them this year. So what you think what happened, man? What's gonna happen? Then why you think the fall we went for four because seed. all they did was get scouted. They got in the playoffs and everybody exposed them. This is what we're going to do with him. This is what we're going to do with him. They gave him the play. You seen that series with the Atlanta Hawks and all the New York? Yeah, Knicks? I seen the series. Who was that for? Who gets the blame for the Knicks just winning one? wasn't better than them. The Hawks is better than them. But the Knicks beat the Hawks all season long. The man. playoffs. See, y'all keep thinking. The, the what's record is one thing. The regular season is one thing. The playoffs is when you're nut, nut check time. This is when you get serious. You can scout the player. This is what we're going to do. You have a plan because you're only playing one team. You're not flying to another city. You don't know what time they came in that night, where they was, where they hanging out. You don't know about all that. But now you know where they're at in the controlled environment. They got to play them seven games. So you're telling me that because it's just a regular season game, they're not going to play as hard as if it was a postseason game? Heck no. But don't you need a, a certain amount of postseason wins in order to even – Get, I mean, regular season games to even to get, get your to the position for the playoffs. Yeah. The best teams finishing at the top. The Knicks was in a play. -in. I mean, they was at what eighth place or something like that. Right. We we, we came to fourth seed. Yeah. Well, whatever. They but, but you see what they did in the playoffs. You can't. I like the Knicks. The Knicks are my team. But you have to be honest when you're talking about basketball. They not that good. They, to me, they're in disarray. Are you high on Tom Thibodeau as a coach? All right, to me. Where do you rate him as a coach? I, I don't even rate him. He, he's not in the. He's not let, in the great. Let, let, let me show you something. He could be. He put him on a fantastic team with a bunch of talent. He looked like the greatest coach on earth. They was just getting ready to get rid of Milwaukee coach before they won the championship. If Kevin Durant had a been an inch shorter with his foot, that coach would have been gone. Hold on one second. Yeah. Hold on. Dre. I don't know. I'm waiting for Dave Kane to give me the... This they, is Real Talk with Nick, y'all. We out here in Harlem. Yeah. We doing it, y'all. Nah, 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 nah. It's a whole nother place. We they doing it, y'all. Nice. If we go in there at 730, right. 7 o'clock, then you know... I appreciate y'all. Yeah, 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 it's straight. All right, we're going to get it in, man. We're going to get it in. NBA plays, man. Yeah. Breaking it down, nah, man. Nah, nah. Rock and Legends. Hey, about some 16 But, you know, hey, Bobby doing all that kind of stuff. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, man. All right, man. And, and, and as I was saying, man, Tom Dibodeau, you're not high on him. I mean, he was a defensive-minded coach and whatnot, and he was good at Chicago, and he was good as a Boston assistant and things like that. Do you but think he disrespected the youth? A lot of people complain about Disrespected who? He overlooks the youth. Like, you got players like Cam Reddish. You got players like Kevin Knox. Some say he don't give the youth the opportunity to play, and he he. They not that good. They just all right. But how can a player develop his game they if you don't give him minutes? Take advantage of whatever time they get. That's how. And he's an old time coach, so that's why it goes like that. 
All right, my man. I want to thank you for coming on Real Talk yes. with Nick, breaking David it down. Prince. It's been a pleasure. Let them know who you are again. Before David we... Brady. I live in Texas now, but I'm from 116th Street between Lennox and 7th. And that's what it is. And we out on Real Talk with Nick.